We are in a remote island in the South Pacific and our boat needs major repairs. Two weeks earlier, we were on a mooring in Bora Bora that broke away. It sent our boat into a nearby hotel. And while it caused significant damage to the deck and crossbeam, the hotel actually kept the bottom from hitting the reef and we were able to save the boat. We've cleaned up most of the mess and made some initial repairs ourselves, but now we need to move the yacht to a qualified yard. Since I've flown E and the boys home to America, our insurance company has thankfully agreed to fly on a surveyor who will help me inspect and then move the boat to some fiberglass experts in nearby Reatea. So I'm kind of a little nervous about the, uh, about the crossing. I'm sure the boat's gonna be fine, but you know, who likes motoring directly into the wind and waves? So let's go get him. All right, anchor up. As I'm hauling up the anchor here, uh, I've made four modifications to the rig. I've added uh, two additional halyards here and then another two halyards here. So these are, these are lines that will hopefully add additional support to that seagull striker that you know, is, is iffy. So that, that should keep the mast up, uh, even if we're pounding into the waves. So just a little bit of additional precaution. Okay, we are free. Let's do this. Love this anchorage. It's a shame uh, you're not allowed to anchor here anymore. It's uh, not part of their new mooring ball idea, and I don't really understand why. There's no coral. Uh, it's a beautifully protected anchorage from the windward side of the island. Plenty deep for a catamaran, but I guess they don't want us here. They didn't seem to bother me though. Just follow my track out of here. coming in to get the surveyor that's his plane right there coming down to land right in the middle of the screen okay so Christoph is here he seems awesome he's um, cleared us for departure okay this is my new home Reatea Carinage. We uh, hauled out here 10 years ago to get a honeymoon painted. I don't remember any of it, um, but hey, we made it to the yard. That's all that matters. So it was, uh, it was actually quite rough. We, we, uh, we left when it was about 15 knots and it went to 20, which is about 25 apparent. Lots of white caps, lots of waves. Archer was kind of pounding into lots of them. Salt and spray everywhere. It's kind of worried about something else breaking, but this boat is a beast, nothing happened. Okay, so later today, we're gonna to be hauling out. We're gonna be going through this channel, which is crazy narrow. So this is a huge monumental step for us to get this boat to this yard and to get it hauled out and to get those repairs started. The boat itself is just totally ripped apart. We've got everything out so we can inspect all the ports. So we've moved um, everything out to be able to inspect the bottom here, which is the right thing to do. We even had to take the floors out underneath there, which is a real pain in the butt. And the same thing over here. So amazing about storage and when you have all this stuff out, it's just uh, not very believable. So the beds. But everything now look like this. Elizabeth, this is just a disaster. I wish you were here. <laughs> but you, Elizabeth, you're very lucky that you're not. This is just 
a lot of work. Oh. Okay, the boat is on the hard. As you can tell, we're, we're in Rantan Carinage. We're up uh, out of the water, which is great. Uh, we're at the yard. Um, the survey is now complete. We're waiting for the final paperwork. And then uh, once they give that to the yard here, they'll create a kind of a price list and then they'll send that to the insurance. And then the insurance after a couple of days, well, I'm sure hopefully approve that. Uh, and then they can start fixing the boat, which is great. And apparently Ray Tate Karanaj can do it all. He showed me, uh, uh, Dominic, the guy that runs it, showed me a whole bunch of pictures of boats they've worked on. They've even painted a boat, the exact same color as ours, uh, this bright red, even fairly recently. So the work they do looks amazing. Uh, what we need is the cross beams, the main critical piece. That's the beam that connects the two bows at the front of the boat and helps keep it rigid. And that cross beam needs to be replaced. And um, it's something that Utremer has helped me order right away. They've got, they were really great the day after the accident, they kind of put, put an order in. But if that beam doesn't ship before they go on break, then it's gonna be a long time. Shipping is six to eight weeks uh, to get here to Reatea from France. That's a really long time. And then they need to put it in. Is, I guess we've got a lot of work we can do in between now and then. They're gonna they're gonna fix up the hole. I'll kind of show you what the boat looks like uh, and what the yard looks like. But they're gonna fix up the hole on the deck. Uh, no problem there. I can't believe it, but the boat uh, looks like it's gonna be fine. It's just a matter of time, uh, and then hopefully you know money. Our our deductible kind of hurt on the insurance, but that's why you have insurance. So try and stay really positive. It's been three weeks almost. I haven't seen my kids. It's been over three weeks since the accident. Uh, and things are finally starting to happen, so it's really great to see. Um, looking forward to seeing Archer back in the water soon. It was a tough couple of weeks for me. I would wake up each morning reliving the accident and the fact that our dream that we'd worked so hard to make a reality had been put on hold. I'm a natural optimist, but I will admit that this one was tough. Further to that point, when our accident was covered in the local news, I was surprised to read in the comments that some locals were cheering the fact that our boat was damaged. This brought to life an anti-cruiser sentiment that we were not aware of, and indeed we saw firsthand while on a friend's boat one evening that locals were approaching boats in known sandy anchorages and telling them to leave immediately. In speaking to them, we've learned that there's a growing sense that yachties drop their anchor on the coral, pump our waste into their lagoons, and fill their local trash cans with our garbage. And indeed, this was a reoccurring message we heard many times thereafter, and not all that incorrect either. While we were trying very hard to avoid anchoring on live coral, some of the declared anchorages, like this one in Huahine, are damaging coral and the locals are protesting it. But the other issues are one we cannot address without their help. There are no pump-out docks for cruisers or trash services, both of which we would happily pay for, especially if it's having a negative impact on the island. We're not sure how this is going to be resolved, but cruisers planning to visit here in the future should be aware that some locals, and certainly not all, but some will resent their presence. I hope that the islands consider adding these services for a fee before tensions boil over, or possibly follow the approach we saw in Fiji, where a visit to the local village is required when anchoring. This allows for an open dialogue and a more friendly approach. Either way, we hope something changes before tensions boil over and property gets damaged. Meanwhile, in Archer, I just had a ton of work to do to store the boat in the tropics. The boat obviously is going to be closed up, so we need to do everything we can to keep the temperatures down, the bugs out, the thieves out, and uh, just prevent mold. Here you see me just putting up tinfoil on all the windows just to keep the sun out. I also removed all the running rigging lines from the decks and then covered all the instruments and helm seat and all the stuff that sits out in the sun. There's also a bunch of other things you need to do, like defrosting your fridge and freezers. I ran vinegar through all of our fresh water hoses. I pickled our water maker. I added biocides to the fuel tanks. It's just a lot of work. Okay, so with a little help from the internet and the previous owner who is still answering my emails, which is amazing, uh, I was able to figure out how to uh, pickle the membrane or preserve the membrane in the water maker. So it's actually super easy. Uh, put a bucket with some solution in it, well, actually, first you run, run 10 minutes of water through it without any pressure. And then just uh, mix a solution in a five gallon bucket and run it through the filter. And then flip a valve to run it back to the bucket instead of overboard. 
and you just run that for 15 minutes and presto your membrane is preserved so we can now leave the boat and uh, not worry about the, the membrane. I also tackled a couple of projects on my list like replacing the leaking emergency hatch. I can't even begin to tell you how hard it was to take this off. All right, the old one is off and the new one is on. All in, I think I spent about two weeks dealing with just the four main concerns, UV damage, mold prevention, bug prevention, and theft prevention. And then I hopped on my plane and flew home. Okay, so I'm here, back in Cape Cod. It feels a little strange to be here. We uh, left from right here 11 months ago, September 15th, only to get all the way around to Bora Bora and then fly back here in a day. So I'd be lying if I, if I said that didn't feel a little strange and self-defeating. But at the same time, we're just trying to you know enjoy our time here. Obviously, you see my parents and some of our friends. Cape Cod is a lovely place to be for August. So uh, we're gonna enjoy it as much as we can. In terms of repairs, things are moving along. Uh, the yard has already started the work, which is great. Uh, we, Utremer already ordered us all the parts that we needed, uh, including the crossbeam, which they've shipped which is really amazing. That needed to get out before the August shutdown and they got that out. So what we're looking at is uh, four weeks from today, that beam will arrive in Tahiti and then probably another two weeks and it gets to Reatea. And once it's in Reatea, that's kind of it. Hopefully the rest of the repairs will be done and they throw that cross beam on and we're good to go. So that's kind of the driving timeline at this point. And we're just gonna be kind of waiting it out in, in Cape Cod. Thanks for watching everybody, and we'll keep you updated in terms of what happens. And of course, the second we're back, uh, we'll let you guys know. So thanks again, uh, take care, bye.